Hey everybody, it's your friend Moonhorse. Uh, this particular neckbeard tale, I, uh, I I read and recorded it earlier, um, and I didn't like the way it came out, uh, mainly because. Sorry, I needed a drink. So, mainly because, as I've said with a lot of the stories I read, I try to go into these things blind uh, and just react as, you know, genuinely as possible. And I, uh, and I read this one, and it, uh, it went somewhere I wasn't expecting. So, I am going to re-record it, because it's important that these kind of stories also get told. Uh... I don't, I don't want to pretend like the only things that, you know, come out of this, this predicaments and shit like that is just, oh, it's always funny, and it's like, it's, it's not, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's really fucked up, so, uh, that being said, um, I'm just gonna give you a little warning, this is, uh, this is a kind of a fucked up story, so, here we go, from Reddit Uter. Uh, beardless Neckman. Still a great name. When a neckbeard actually wins. So this whole sub is filled with stories of neckbeards and those unfortunate enough to encounter them. Usually in a mix of realism and wish fulfillment, the neckbeard gets what's coming to him. Carmen's a bitch. Bites him in the ass eventually. Scary thing is, there, there are times when the neckbeard actually gets what he wants in the end. I mean, he doesn't just stay in his mother's basement or attic for the remainder of his life, but, well... I'll just share my, share my story. <sighs> there was this guy in high school. We'll call him Jeremy. Jeremy was a weird dude. He wasn't even terrible looking or obese. For some reason, however, all the fat went to his head. His face looked bloated. He had a double chin where there should have only been one. No neck beard as when I met him. We were both about 17, but thick, unruly sideburns. I, he thought they must have made him look cool, but just kind of made him look like a fuzzy idiot. He was pretty burly and hairy and had a beer gut and was very, very particular about his height. He always insisted he was 6'1", but in reality, he couldn't have been over about 5'11". He tended to wear shoes with lifts in them to give him a height boost. All this reeked of crippling insecurity, but, you know, he hit it well. He was loud, and he always wanted and needed to be the center of attention. He had very strong opinions about things. He loved messing with people and trolling them in real life. He would argue with teachers about things, especially in history class. Some of his views were unorthodox and extreme, to say the least. Jeremy was extremely misogynistic. He was racist against Asian people, especially Asian men, while objectifying Asian women. In the meantime, he seemed to have some begrudging respect for black guys, especially the rapper 50 Cent for some reason. He knew all about G-Unit and knew the lyrics to every fucking song. He was also terribly anti-Semitic and would spit on the floor whenever he would say the word Jew in a conversation. Fuck this guy. This got worse when he started to hang out with a group of Muslim boys around his age. I'm having trouble reading this one, you guys. I'm sorry. Now I was a bit of an outcast in high school. I'd hang out with other social pariahs near the indoor gym at school, which is where I where Jeremy would hold court every lunch break. He had a lot of stories about other people. Every time I walked in, would hear him mock another student, insult someone's looks. A lot of the people we hang with, most of us boys, were uncomfortable to discuss girls' bodies in the way that he did, but he sort of dragged us all down to his level with his insistence to do so. At times, he would get extremely graphic. There was one girl in our group, Anna. She joined fairly recently by the time that Jeremy was already self-crowned king of the misfits. And I was a bit of the on-the-sidelines type. I stayed silent for most of Jeremy's outburst. Side-eyed some of my friends who went along with it so willingly, but rarely did I ever speak up. I didn't want to lose the only group of people that I was, that was willing to tolerate my presence, or so I thought. Anyway, this girl Anna joined, and... She was pretty, a bit on the chubby side, but curvy and blessed with very large tracts of land, shall we say. Of course, we all took notice, especially Jeremy. Now, Anna's a bit of a socially awkward girl, even more so than most of us there. She was deathly shy, had a lot of trouble opening up to us. Jeremy's mother and her mother knew one another, which made him think that he had an in with her. At some point during summer break, Jeremy had invited Anna on his family's yacht for a 
long weekend on some lake. His family was pretty loaded. Hers wasn't. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, as he kept reminding me. Anna asked us one day when Mr. Sideburns wasn't around what we thought. Should she go or not? I told her, and I regret this to this very day, that, yeah, I mean, you might as well go. I got seems kind of cool, right? And she agreed, reluctantly. Summer came and went. I didn't hear from Anna anymore after the supposed visit to the yacht, and after I knew she had returned, also nothing. Most of us stayed in contact over MSN in those days, so this is all kind of weird to me, but yeah, summer break was over. And I saw the gang again. Jeremy's there looking smugger than ever. Anna wasn't. After about a week, I heard through another friend that she had moved schools. So I asked her over chat, I'm like, what happened? Why did you suddenly switch schools? And she ignored me at first. But after a day or two, she finally answered, I should have prepared myself for a long story, that I may be shocked and that she was sorry, but she had to get it off her chest. As it turns out, Jeremy kept insisting on going swimming together with her on the boat. He had been horrible to her. More or less forced her through incessant whining to change into her swimsuit. And when she did, he went into her room and watched her change. She immediately covered herself with a towel, and he told her, Don't be shy. We're all humans here. Look, I'll show you why not to be shy. And with that, he proceeded to just remove his jeans. After that, he removed his underwear. And she looked away, but he told her she had to keep looking. That he wanted her to see. So she saw all of him. All of him. Hairy bitch tits, beer gut, very erect pencil dick, and humongous furry balls. He paraded around in front of her proudly, insisted that she also get naked. She did, briefly, to change into her bathing suit, and after that, she quickly ran to the deck and into the water. Once there, after a very loud cannonball that would have put Free Willy to shame, our very own way-too-free Willy proceeded to swim awkwardly close to her, continuously touching her under the water. He kept this up as long as she was in the water, and behaved somewhat better when his parents were around, but his older brother and father would go fishing on a little boat that they also brought, and his mother was usually in her little hut drinking wine barely ever paying attention to her younger son and the girl that he claimed was his girlfriend but really wasn't and was just a reluctant guest slash borderline prisoner. In the days that followed, Jeremy got more and more brazen. He forced himself into her room and on many occasions, a room which very conveniently didn't seem to have a lock on it. He ogled her whenever clothed and he fondled her without her consent. He did not all out rape her but he did basically sexual assault, sexually assault her repeatedly. <sighs> He also masturbated in front of her and forced her to watch him. By the last day, she had barricaded the door with her bag and clothes and any items she could find and refused to eat. His parents got a bit concerned about her, and that's when Jeremy got paranoid, thinking he may have gone too far. So he told her, you need to be quiet, never tell anyone. And if she did, A, there would be consequences for her actions, and B, no one would believe you anyway. So as soon as she had the opportunity to leave, she did. She went home broke down, telling everything to her mother. Her mother did not hesitate for a minute and immediately called Jeremy's mother, who asked her son to come down. He quickly refuted the whole thing, saying it was a big lie and insinuating that her mother, who, <clears throat> who was divorced and pretty broke, had coached her daughter to accuse him, to extort them. It caused a massive rift between their two mothers, who used to be somewhat friends. And eventually Anna and her mother decided to change schools because it became very obvious that no one's going to believe them and Anna could not stand to face him anymore. <sighs> she started overeating, became really lethargic, and had to go to therapy, which her mother could barely afford. I was livid. I confronted Jeremy the next day after class, but he just told me that if I told anyone, told this to anyone, he'd tell the other members of our little clique, and they would just turn, he'd just turn them against me. And he'd be kicked out of this group. I feel like a fucking coward and a terrible human being to this day. But I actually backed down. I didn't stand up to his fat ass, even though I should have. He remained smug as always, and remained the same old motherfucker he'd always been. Full of bravado, rapey jokes, and racist comments. Anna and I were the only ones who knew that the rapey jokes weren't actually jokes. Eventually I got to college, made a few friends, better friends, and... I learned better social skills and got a social life. I actually got asked to go to parties and picked up drinking and had a blast. I forgot about Jeremy and sadly forgot about Anna too. 
My past and I drifted away from each other, and I was fine that way. Pushed the guilt away. Jeremy went to a different college, and from usual friends and social media, I gathered he failed his studies. He had to stop. He dropped out of college three times, failing three vastly different courses. I took some solace from the fact that at least he was a total failure. But fast forward ten years to the events of that summer, he's lost weight grown a proper beard, and started resembling a somewhat normal human being, at least at first glance. He's married to an Asian woman with a university degree who, by all accounts, is too good for him, and he has recently become a father, to a daughter no less, which is fucked up to me on a whole lot of levels for a multitude of reasons. Even though he failed all his studies, he simply got hired by his father's company and now has a pretty easy job. He's smoothly sailing through life, from what I can tell, Anna, meanwhile, never really overcame what happened to her. She's an artist now. I recently got in contact with her again, and feelings of guilt came crashing back all over. I feel like I was such a coward back then. TLDR, I dealt with a neckbeard in high school. It was horrible, abusive, terrible piece of shit. I never had the satisfaction of standing up to him like so many other people here seem to have done. I wish I'd been braver. I can't, I can't really say what you should do in a situation like that, because I can't. I can tell you what I would do, and I can tell you that <laughs> what I would do would subsequently get your friend Moonhorse in a lot of trouble. Um, I can argue with somebody who makes misogynistic, racist, sexist comments. Someone who says that all women are stupid or some shit like that, and I can argue with you and say you're terrible. You know, this motherfucker. Well, knowing who he is, and I don't know him personally, but from the way he's described and his family is described, the only thing that would have happened, you know, one of those, had I been there kind of things, it would have been very simply this. I would have found out that he sexually assaulted a friend of mine. I would have beaten the ever-loving dog shit out of him and then probably got arrested for assault. And he'd get away with it. And the only thing he'd have to show for it is a few scars. It wouldn't change anything. He'd still be the same worthless, garbagey, disgusting piece of shit that he is. And I know it probably wouldn't mean much for the victims, but... I guess the only thing I can say is, you know, one of those things that, if it had been your friend Moonhorse, any time you see this garbagey person and you realize that he has that really wicked scar on one side of his face where I laid into him with a piece of metal that I probably shouldn't have... Just remember I did it. Just remember that this is a slight, a slight bit of justice. But even then, it's not really up to snuff, is it? People like that deserve accountability. They need to be held responsible for their shitty, fucking horrible actions. But sometimes there ain't no justice, kids. I'm sorry this isn't a funnier story, but sometimes we need to be reminded of what happens when shitty motherfuckers like this are allowed to do what they want. We always think of the, you know, the harmless neckbeards, and there are, there are some. You know, there, there are the harmless ones. But then there are people like this, who when they make their, ooh, women get back in the kitchen jokes, they're not fucking kidding. When they talk about how they just, oh, she's so hot, I'd rape her, and that's not a fucking joke. And that if they could do it, they would. That's why we take this kind of shit seriously. And that's why we listen when people say shit. Because sometimes, this little pudgy asshole's fucking around. And sometimes, sometimes he takes advantage of some poor shy girl on his parents' boat while his dumbass parents aren't paying attention to what their kid does. I hope he has nightmares about himself. Piece of shit. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm not gonna do the YouTube outro, just thanks for watching, and... If for some reason... I don't, I doubt this will ever happen, but, you know, if for some reason... The guy who wrote this story, if your friend Anna, if you, she hears this, or you hear this and tell her... I'm sorry.
at least one person is sorry. Goodbye.